What's up people, it's DevSage here and in this video I'm going to be teaching you about the this keyword in JavaScript. So what is this? This is a keyword that is used to reference the object that is executing the current function. That's it. This is a reference to the object that is executing the current running function. So what do I mean by that? So let's say we have a function test and inside of this function, let's console log this. And now let's call test here. So our function is test. It's being called here. This is going to refer to the object that is calling test. In this case, test is being executed from the global scope. So that means the object that is calling it is technically the window object since window is on the top level. So if we save this, we can see that the window object gets printed out. And that's pretty much the gist of this. It's a reference to whatever object is calling the current function. Let's take a look at another example. So let's get rid of this code and let's paste in a user object here. This user has a first name, a last name, and also a full name property, which is a function that basically prints out the first and last name together. So if we were to call user.fullName, we'll see that the first thing we printed out is the actual user object itself. And then we have Patrick Scott. It was able to print the first name and the last name by calling this dot first name and this dot last name. So how did this work? So in this case, this inside of this full name property here, this is a reference to whatever object is calling this full name function. So how do we figure that out? One pro tip to determine what this actually refers to is to go to the function call and look immediately left of it. And whatever object is here, that is what this will refer to. So in this case, this refers to user. So that's why we can say this dot first name, this dot last name, because the this reference stands for the user object here. Okay, let's modify this example a little bit. Instead of using a regular JavaScript function here, let's try using an arrow function instead. So an arrow function is JavaScript's shorthand for regular functions, but they don't exactly work the same way as regular functions do when it comes to scoping. Arrow functions actually don't have their own this scope. An arrow function will inherit the this scope of the nearest surrounding regular function. So in this case, in our previous example, we had function. This function has its own this scope, but if we use an arrow function, the arrow function is going to try to inherit the nearest regular functions this scope. But in this case, there is no regular function surrounding it. So what it's going to end up doing is it's going to use the global object as it's this reference. In this case, that's the window. So as you can see over here, we printed out window and then instead of first name, last name, we have undefined undefined because there isn't a first name or a last name property on the window object. So that's just something really important to note when you're dealing with arrow functions and trying to use this. An arrow function will inherit the scope of the nearest containing regular function. And if you don't have a regular function, it's just going to inherit the global scope. So what we can do to get around this, you can say function. This is just for an example, but if we have a regular function here and let's say we have an arrow function inside of it, an arrow function, and then we put this code in here. and let's call arrow function, what's going to happen is line six is going to say, okay, I am an arrow function. I don't have my own this scope. I'm going to look up 
and I'm going to try to find the nearest containing regular function and I'm going to inherit that functions this scope. So it's going to find the full name function here and it's going to say, okay, I'm just going to use whatever you're using as your this reference and I'm going to use that as my this reference as well. So if we were to save this, we can see that now we're printing out the first, we're printing out the user object again, and then we're able to actually get our first and last name again, because arrow functions inherit the scope of the nearest containing regular function that surrounds it. Okay, cool. So let's modify this example a little bit more. Let's actually get rid of this full name property and this call. Let's add an array to this user object. Let's call this array hobbies. Let's say uh, programming and piano. And then let's add a, a method that's going to basically print out all of the hobbies. So let's call this list hobbies function. And then let's say this dot hobbies dot for each function hobby pass the hobby in and then let's print out console log hobby let's save that oh and let's call user dot list hobbies okay so we printed out programming and piano so we're able to inside of list hobbies we're able to grab the hobbies from the user object loop over all those hobbies and print it out. So let's make this a little more interesting. Let's say that I wanted to print out my first name along with my hobby. So let's try to use the first name property inside of this for each callback function here, not inside of list hobbies, but inside of this callback and see what's, uh, and see what's going to happen. So let's say console log this dot first name. As you can see, we have undefined programming, undefined piano. So we're able to still print out our hobbies, but whenever we try to access the first name property, we're getting undefined. And that's because we actually entered in a new context here because we have this function here. This for each takes in a callback function and this function has its own scope but it's not attached to the user. The user object is not calling this function. This, this function is technically being called from the global scope. It's not being called by any specific object necessarily. It's just being called by the window, by the global scope. So if we were to say console log this, we'll see that this actually refers to the window. So we have window programming, window piano. So this is obviously an issue because we're trying to access the, the user scope, but inside of this for loop function, we have access to the window. So how do we get around this? Well, for each specifically can actually take in a second parameter after the callback function. And this parameter can represent some object that you want to use as the this reference. So in this case, Let's say we just passed in an object test. And I say test, test. This object is going to be used as the this reference inside of this for each callback function. So if I were to save this, we can see that here. Test, programming, test, piano. So what we can do is we can just pass in the this reference from the list hobbies function into this function. So remember that this reference inside of list hobbies is pointing to the user. So we can just pass that in here and it'll be used as the this reference inside of the function. So let's try that. And as you can see, we have our user and then programming and then user and then piano. So if I were to print out, if I were to add back this dot first name, we'll see Patrick programming, Patrick piano. Now it's important to note that not all methods are going to allow you to pass in your own this reference. 
This just happens to be what for each allows us to do. Let's see how the this keyword works with constructor functions. So let's say we have a function user and a user is going to take in a name. And we're going to say this dot name equals name. And let's console log this. So if I were to go down here and create a new user called devsage, devsage equals new user, devsage, and I were to save this, we can see that we print out the devsage user. That's what this references. Whenever you create a new object using the new keyword, the this is going to refer to that specific object that you just created. So if I were to create a new object, say coding phase equals new user coding phase, and I save it, we see that we print out the object that is specific to coding phase. That's what this represents. This is going to refer to the specific object that you created whenever you use the new keyword to create that object. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And that is a little bit about the this keyword in JavaScript. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content, some more web dev explained simply. And yeah, peace.